Good morning everybody. So today I have a short video for you on how to make your macros a lot more robust. And one of the most common problems I see with macros is that they are very specific to the given workbook. So here we have a, a worksheet. Now the default name for this worksheet would have been sheet one, as I've called it here. And we have some code which we've recorded just using the macro recorder, which is specific to sheet one. And it's specific to the tab name. And what happens is if a user doesn't bother to change the tab name, then that's perfectly fine. They click on this button, it works, job done. However, when a user does something stupid, which they often do, and goes and renames this tab name to, let's say, random tab name, then as soon as they click on the button, it breaks straight away, swap script out of range error. Okay, we're not gonna debug that now. What we're gonna cover in this video is how to structure your macros so that the user can do whatever they want to the tab name, click on that button, it still works fine. Job done, not a problem. And the way we're gonna do this is by using what's known as worksheet code names. And we can see the code here is the code that we're gonna build in this video using code names. So as usual, we're gonna start here with just a blank workbook. First thing I'm going to do is just record a macro that will copy this worksheet and it will just paste it to the end of the other worksheets. So what we're going to do is, first of all, let's format some of these cells so we know what we're copying. We'll say inputs one, inputs two, and let's give these some nice color coding. There we go. We'll save that. And then we're going to go to the developer tab. I'm going to go record macro. We'll call this copy paste. And literally all we're going to do is right click on the tab name, click move or copy. We're going to move to the end and we're going to create a copy. Okay. And then we're going to stop recording. That's it. Very straightforward. Very simple macro. We're then going to add in a button. We'll assign that button to the copy paste macro we've just recorded. And we'll just put the text on that button to say copy paste. Okay, let's remove that worksheet. And what we should see is that when we click on copy paste, it just copy pastes that worksheet. Remove that again. And the key problem we're gonna find is as soon as the user goes along and changes this to say inputs, then clicks on copy paste, we get a subscript out of range error, runtime error number nine. When we click on debug, it takes us to the code we've just recorded and we can see the offending line of code here. Now, why has this caused a problem? It's caused a problem because when we've recorded the macro, it's been specific to that worksheet. And by specific to that worksheet, I mean that in here, it's used the worksheet tab name. Now, users have a habit of going in and doing things like changing tab names. So as soon as they do that, this macro is gonna break. What we're gonna do is just stop the code execution there. As usual, we're gonna tidy up our code a little bit. We're gonna start by changing the project name to something more sensible. We'll call this copy paste project. We're gonna change this module name to be again, something sensible. So M copy paste. Let's close that down. And this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna write some code that will copy and that will paste a worksheet, a specific worksheet, and it's going to do it 
in a much more robust way so that the users can go and change the tab name as much as they want and it won't have an impact on our subroutine. How do we do that? We do that using what's called code names. Before we actually write our code, I want you to notice up here on the left in the Project Explorer, we can see the inputs worksheet is labeled as sheet one and then in brackets, inputs. This bit in brackets here, that's the tab name for that worksheet. And this name here is the code name for that worksheet. So how can we change the code name? Well, we use the properties pop-up window. So press F4. This brings up the properties pane. We can see right at the top of the properties pane, there's this name in brackets and sheet one here. That is our code name. We're going to type inputs. In fact, let's use inputs code name. We can see down here, there's a separate entry for name without brackets, and that's our tab name. Now, when a user's normally using a spreadsheet, they can see the tab name, they can change it easily, unless you lock down the workbook, unless you protect the workbook. What they can't do straight from the worksheet is change the code name. In order to change the code name, they have to know how to open up the Visual Basic Editor, find the code name, and then change it. So it's a lot more difficult for them to mess about with the code name. Let's build our code that actually works using the code name. I'm going to use public sub robust copy paste. And let's do something a little more clever here. Let's actually create a new tab name. Say dim new worksheet tab name, a string. And then we're going to use the format and now functions to create a new tab name. So let's say new worksheet tab name equals code name underscore format now Okay, let's just close the crop prop. Let's just close the properties pane to give us a bit more space. And then to perform the actual copy and paste, we're going to go directly to the worksheet. And to do this, we just need to type in the worksheet code name. We don't need to use the application object or this workbook. We can just type in the worksheet code name. In this case, inputs code name and we can see if we use the control and tab keyboard combination it will auto complete because it knows there's a worksheet with a code name that starts with inputs and we're just going to say dot copy we can see what you notice there when I click the dot operator we get the IntelliSense drop down and the IntelliSense drop down that you're seeing here is the one that's specific to a worksheet because it knows from the input's code name that it's a worksheet object. So VBA is quite clever. It'll tell you and give you the options for that specific object. And we want to dot copy. And we want to say, you want to copy it after this workbook dot worksheets and this workbook.worksheets.count. And the reason I'm copying and pasting into a specific location is that we now want to change the tab name for the new worksheet that we're just copying. And the easiest way that I've found to do this is by copying it to a specific position and then using that position to change the tab name. So we'll now say this workbook 
dot worksheets is workbook dot worksheets dot count dot name equals new worksheet tab name. Okay, and to tidy up our code here, let's just use a with block. Okay, and we can just remove that this workbook and just leave the dot in. So you can see how I construct the with block there. I noticed that I was using this workbook a lot in these two lines of code. So I simply use the with block for this workbook and any instances of this workbook I removed and just use the dot operator. So each time it encounters this dot, it will put this workbook in front of it. Okay, compile that code, it compiles fine. And then we'll go back to our worksheet we're going to again insert a button. We're going to assign this one to robust copy paste. Let's just resize that, make it nice and neat. And we'll give the button text, we'll say copy paste code name. Excellent. Click on the button and it copies and pastes exactly like we're expecting, gives it a new tab name called codename underscore, and then the date and then the time. You can see I, I tend to get up very early, if you haven't noticed that already. And then what we're gonna do is we're now gonna change this to random tab name. So the user's gone in and they've done the stupid thing, what they usually do, they start messing about with the structure of the spreadsheet, and they start changing things like tab names. I'm going to click on save and we're just going to click on our button to copy and paste using the code name. And we can see it works perfectly fine. It doesn't matter what the user does in terms of changing the tab name. Our code still works. So we'll just remove that. And that's it. We're done for today.